Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your heart. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. I promise I've been spinning all night, except for the very first wine. Um, all right. So um, yet again, uh, more sample wines uh, from Creative Palette. Um, this this time again from Kate uh, Kokoran. Um, Kate, I hope I pronounced your name correctly every time I say the last name. I don't think I said the last couple ones because I'm like, oh, I'll skip the last name. Anyway, um, so both of these wines uh, suggested retail price are $11. Um, so more Conchigatoro from the uh, Cassiero del Diablo line of their wines. I did all right on that, didn't I? Um, so the first one we got is the 2016 uh, Chardonnay from Chile. Um, this is not like, you know, like a single vineyard or, or a, um, a, a smaller area. Um, anyway, more of an entry level uh, uh, offering from them. I love the screw cap. Always love screw cap. There we go. I find how easily I can pour while sitting down, at least left-handed, right-handed. I don't know if I could. Standing up, I'm ambidextrous on it. All right. All um, right. I said, I love, I love uh, screw caps. So uh, let's just get right into the wine. You know, color's good. I can't remember the last time I ever said anything. The color was bad. Have you ever, have you ever heard someone say, "Oh, it's bad color on that wine"? I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. At least not anything like that's, that's recent vintage. If it's a quote bad color, usually it's oh, it's really aged because it's probably old wine. All right, so let's just get right into the nose. Very, uh, very aromatic, actually. I'm gonna say heavy on the yellow apple. A bit of cantaloupe melon, uh, but more of the, um, like where the seeds are, that really ripe area, really aromatic part of, of a cantaloupe. Touch of peach and nectarine, a little bit of orange. Not so much on the lemon lime uh, citrus end of things. Some white flowers. I mean, lots of aromatics actually going on in here. Everything is ripe on the fruit. Let's say a touch of spice on there. A touch of uh, vanilla. So probably seen some age, probably seen some uh, thyme and oak. I don't know if it says anything on the back. It doesn't say anything in the uh, materials. Um, but it does say subtle hints of vanilla. You don't get vanilla from stainless steel, buddy. Um, so yeah. I mean, it might be some, a uh, lot of uh, second year, you know, one year old oak. Maybe a touch of new oak in here just to give that extra bit of oomph for the uh, vanilla. But yeah, let's try it out. There's also a bit of, um, I'll come up with it. I, I smell it a lot of times in Chardonnay. I just, I don't always verbalize it though. Mm. I think it was really like the remnants of the, of the popcorn uh, smell that you sometimes get. Um, I'm really just going to look this up because I really, I, I thought I looked up why we get that popcorn or burnt popcorn smell. I thought I understood it, but you know, I don't think I really understood fully why, why, um, why we get that. 
you know, it's probably gonna take me too long to really find a good website to explain it because it's all gonna be just like, oh, it's in there. Um, but it's, it's, it's not overpowering, but it's there. Um, as far as the rest of the flavors, um, they're all there. I'd say it's heavier on the um, on the apple and also a bit of the orange uh, rather than the melon, the cantaloupe part of things. Um, you got the bit of vanilla in there, got a bit of spices, so you know the oak's coming through. Um, it's a well-made wine. Uh, it's well-balanced. It's 11 bucks. You can't go wrong with this wine uh, for $11. Um, is it going to taste very similar to a bunch of other $11 bottles of wine? Yeah, it is. It's going to taste very similar to a lot of those wines, whether from California or from Chile or from anywhere else that's putting out $11 bottles of Chardonnay. Um, but you're not going to go wrong with it. We know that this, this winery does uh, produce really good quality wine as, as a whole. So you're not, you, you shouldn't be disappointed from it. I mean, especially if you, you want something that's easy to drink. Um, you, you, you're maybe having a party, a pool party. Uh, of course, no glass at the pool. Um, but you're having a party and you want to have a nice refreshing white wine to go with it, chill it a bit. It'll taste really good. I mean, you're not going to go wrong with this wine. All right. Let us move on to the wine number two, which is the red wine. All right. So this is also a 2016. This is 2016 Merlot, also $11, like I mentioned before. Um, one of the things that they, in the marketing materials they sent me, um, they were talking about uh, Taco Mania. Is that fever pitch in the United States? Granted, this was written to me, this was sent to me a couple months ago. Um, I'm not saying Taco Mania has ended all of a sudden. Um, but I think they have a date on here when they sent it. No. I don't actually... Somewhere I thought on here there was a date of, of a memo or whatever. But anyway, um, I mean, tacos, dude. Come on, man. Who doesn't like tacos? I don't care if it's Tuesday. Or I don't care. It doesn't have to be on Tuesdays for Taco Tuesday. It could be anywhere. Um, but uh, uh, they're, they're talking about this being a, these being good taco wines. I mean, obviously, uh, I'm not going to have carne guisada with the... Um, <laughs> With the Chardonnay, but if you're gonna have you know something lighter like a fish taco or or something like that, um, yeah, absolutely. So let's let's get into this wine. Maybe this is a good Pastor taco wine. You ever had Pastor? Really good Pastor. I have. Hard to find, but it's really good when you have it. My dad loves it. I don't eat it as much, um, but I usually I usually sneak some off of his plate. All right, um, so on the nose, um, you know, honestly, there is a bit of pepper on there. Not that you can't have that with Merlot, you can, just not used to it with Merlot. Um, Merlot is a cousin to Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, with Cabernet Franc being the, uh, being, uh, the, the, the main culprit in that bell pepper type of aroma. And Merlot is related um, in in all that, but um, it's really like dark purple plum on the fruit, uh, ripe for sure, and a touch of smokiness to it. <clears throat> Baking spices, so definitely got some oak going on here. Um, really purple on the color too. Now. I'm not saying that these guys use it because they might or might not. I have no idea. And please, the Conchitoro people, don't don't be mad if I'm saying you know this product name um, and you don't use it. But it is a widely used uh, product called Mega Purple. Helps with the color and also does. I think it also has some. Um, 
flavoring things. Anyway, sorry, some of these are the dirty little secrets of winemaking. We like to think everything's like pure and perfect and organic and natural, but in reality, especially like, you know, especially the um, uh, commercial, highly commercial, which, you know, these are, these guys do produce a heck of a lot of wine. Um, they're not a boutique winery as far as like by themselves. I mean, there might be small, they may have small production wines, but they also have, large, this is a larger production wine. Um, so yeah, here we go. From the 2006 issue of Wines and Vines, what if someone told you there was a substance you could put into a red wine that made the wine, made the wine darker than you could get naturally, covered pyrazine and masked some of the elements of Brett Tenomyces, Brett, added a textural element that made the wine sweeter in the finish and was reliable because it made even mediocre, mediocre wines taste more uniform. Would you use it? That's mega purple. Anyway. It was just, it was really purple, and I had a discussion with somebody a couple days ago about he was tasting a wine with somebody, with a winemaker, and he didn't tell me who it was, nor did I ask, and he told him, you're using mega purple, aren't you? And the guy goes, yeah, so. I don't know how to taste it. I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how to detect it. I just know it's something that can be used. It's another tool in the shed. It's also like a, yeah, cinnamon. And there's really a lot going on in the in the in the aromas here. And see, I don't think they're using mega purple in here. You know why? Because I kind of get that peppery part too. Um, now maybe it was like heavily pyrazine, which was a, would be really weird the Merlot. But um, with that said, it's an eleven dollar Merlot. Okay. Um, again, when I compare white with red, I'm loving the white better than the red. Um, it's a good red. It's a good party wine red. Um, I don't think that I would be. Uh, I don't think anyone would be raving about it. Like in a, uh, you know, that it's the best red they've ever had. Then again, this wouldn't be the best white wine anyone ever had for eleven dollars. Maybe for eleven dollars, but you know, eleven dollar bottle wine period shouldn't be the best wine you ever had. Um, it still should be a good wine, and this good wine. It it, it drinks proper. I mean, it drinks first price range correctly. Um, I mean, I'm digging the. I'm digging the. Um, I'm digging the pepper part of it, because I, I just love. Um, it's 100% Merlot, at least I think that's what the spec she said. But um, yeah, let's see what they say. I got the plum. Plum and herbs, chocolate and spice, uh, toasted American oak. So I mean, it's all in there. Uh, it's from the Central Valley of Chile, um, even though it just says Chile on it. Uh, but the production area is Central Valley of Chile. I mean, it's a good wine. It's $11. Um, you're not going to go wrong with it, um, but I again, I'd probably rather drink the Chardonnay, which I always find funny that I'd rather drink the Chardonnay over any other wine. Um, I don't like the dog on Chardonnay. I, I do like Chardonnay. I just like Chablis for the most part, and you know other other wines. I mean, I like Chardonnay. I just dog on Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, so much. I think it's just because so many people just think it's like the second coming when they drink it. I mean, I'm digging the wine. I mean, you got the pyrazine kind of in there. Um, you got the plum. Um, I really got some uh, like woodsiness, cedar box, um, spices to it. Um, you know, the tannin isn't overpowering. It's, you know, it's, it's easy drinking wine. Well, as easy drinking as a Merlot can be, um, as a red wine can be. Um, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely at least medium plus on the body. Uh, like I said, tannins are probably medium, medium plus almost. Um, it's a good wine for 11 bucks. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't turn it down for sure. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for this episode. Of, if you see it and you like this stuff, buy it. 11 bucks. I mean, come on. The Chardonnay, I definitely like that one. 
Um, I think that's going to do it for this episode. As always, click the, click the uh, links above to frame me up. Hit the donate button over there. Send me some ducats. Send me to Burgundy um, so I can dog on them there. No, I'm not going to dog on them in Burgundy because I'm probably going to be drinking the really good stuff. I might drink some more, you know, average stuff. Um, they're not going to they're not going to give me their bottom of the barrel stuff to, to review or to drink with them. Um, and click the links below to uh, find out more about uh, Conchi Toro uh, and Casiero del Diablo specifically. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.